Hello, this is Paul here, and I am going to show, show or cover how to make a uh, throated worm drive gear using geometric methods. And what inspired this was another video, which is a tutorial by OT Vinta, and in this case, it has the periods in the name or the, the initials. If you don't do that, you'll get Ukrainian videos. So. That's probably why this guy has sound over, his, he's probably got a strong accent or something. I wouldn't mind it, but who knows how well his English is, so he just has it, uh, his videos annotated or uh, voiced by the computer. Anyhow, I'm going to try doing uh, my own method of doing it, but if you watch his, he has a pretty good way of making gears too, but I'm going to do it with geometric methods, so bear with me. And what I will do is edit this cube to a flat plane. Hopefully the background noise isn't too bad. So from the top. And I will pretty much uh, build up a mesh here, something simple. doing here is this is going to be oops teeth and something like this. Oh I'm getting an interference in the background so hold on. Okay back on again. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was just getting a background noise. Because uh, the room I'm in is not my own room, so just have to deal with it. And the thing about doing gears in this method I'm doing is I'm trying to set them up so they subdivide fairly well. So what I do is the tooth and the space between teeth get three edges going. Because when I use paths, it will round out a lot better than if it had a single area or a single split, something like that. So there's three edges going across this and three edges going across that, like so. And I guess I can bring this up. Now I got a shape that's like this. And the way I'm going to build my gear is I don't even need the bottom half of it, so I'm going to delete it. And now I just have the top faces like so, and Scale it to the 3D cruiser SC0. It takes a little while to construct it. So, this is the start of the gear. And this area here that represents the space between the gear teeth should probably be narrower because it should be somewhere close to about two thirds the width of this or so. So, like the width of this right around here. And since I already have my center set to the 3D cursor, I can just scale that. I don't know why. Oops, or I mean X. <laughs> like so. Just to bring in error. And this can be adjusted later because the way I do this is I am going to use a path. So you now I have this object here. And I am going to create a new object and I'm going to do a Bezier circle. Scale this up. I'm like, why are you using a Bezier circle? Because this is going to be the foundation of making the circular part of the gear. So, what I do is I select this. modifiers and I put on an array modifier and 
the count here will represent the number of teeth on the gear. See how that works? And I want merge on. That's fine. And the next modifier on top of that is going to be the curve modifier. And now you see I have that circle there. I use the Bezier circle and it's inside out. No problem. I can go object mode edit. Now sometimes that's pretty neat to do it that way because you can make a gear with inside teeth really easy that way, but I'm not interested in doing that right now, so <laughs> go figure. And what I'm going to do is turn this around by 180 degrees on the Z axis. See how it flipped over like that, and now when I go out of edit mode to object, you can see it goes around the outside of the ear, and that's kind of what I want. So it's a little rough and crude, but you can see with the three steps for each in between space, it actually rounds out. So that's what I wanted. And same here. And What we do now is we go to the Bezier and we select balance clamp and stretch. And right now there's only four teeth, so it's really weird when stretched out. And you can go back and adjust the mesh depending on your teeth. So, so I gotta select that, not the circle, but the mesh. And so we see how I can make a gear visually just using paths that way and I'm going to do a gear with let's say 32 teeth yeah it's getting kind of thick there so let's just make it 30 even because that will be a multiple of 5, 6, and 15 I believe so yeah I think that'll work and also 10 and 3. <laughs> but I'm thinking of the multiples that it works with. And right now I am going to go back to edit mode. And I probably want to turn on. Like so. Yeah. If you turn on that little clicky there, it will let you preview the gear while you're adjusting this. So that makes it a little easier. And in this case, I kind of want to do that, given the, the setup here. So, bring that radius down a bit. And I'm going to bring this down a bit. My cat is meowing at me, he wants to go outside, so wait a moment, I'm going to pause the video. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm here and he, if I pause like I thought I did, you shouldn't have a problem with it uh, going, so be whoop. <laughs> adjusting this to get the gear shape a little bit better. Probably even narrow this down a bit more on the tip. Oops. Why that's a little off because you put that to a medium point. That would help. Now I have a 30 tooth gear, just like that, and I'm going to use that. I think what I'll do is I'll move this to a different layer just to keep it as a reference. So I'll do that. Switch to this layer. 
And now that I have this gear, I'm going to uh, rotate it just a smidgen and what else do I want to do? <laughs> I gotta think a little bit. I'm going to rotate it so it lines up with the axes and I am going to do some other stuff. Yeah, I'm going to apply everything because this is what I want for the mesh for the base of the gear. So this is a good starting point. Actually, there's one little tiny thing I'd like to do before I apply it. And that is, I am going to add a little bit of control edges for smoothie. This will work well enough. Something like that there. A little crude, but uh, whatever. And oh, what am I doing here? All right, snap that there. Snap that there. And odds are, oh, and I'm getting noise again. I am recording again. I don't really see any status indicator, so I can't be entirely sure. But <laughs> yeah, it's a little crude right now. I moved the edges stuff, so this should uh, continue as a gear to. So if I go to object mode and yeah, it looks good enough. And now I can apply modifiers to have the gear wheel, so that's fine. I just wanted to do that so it would smooth a little bit better on the edges. So, let me apply the modifiers. Oop. I did them in the wrong order, didn't I? Well, undo and apply. There. Now they're applied. So we have our basic gear wheel. And my cat is meowing at me to go back inside the house. I don't know if you notice the bug noises. I relocated outside because the TV's on. Hold on a second. So I have the gear here on my screen. And as I applied it, it should be a whole gear in that mode. So I'm going to check it and remove the doubles. So remove doubles. Just to make sure it's good. And what else do I need to do to it? Uh, I am going to select this edge. Make sure that is circular, because right now the distribution is not exactly even. I have loop tools installed, so I am going to go. And, ooh, what the hell? eyes is not being my friend today. I don't know why. Is this thing uh, stitched together like it's supposed to be? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Usually this works. So, make sure I remove all the doubles. It says there aren't any. Now I am going to select this edge here. Go loop tools and circle, and it's being really weird. And I'm not sure why. All 
Alright, it's being weird. Normally this would distribute things, so... You mean there's something going on with the normals? I can't tell. That could be it. So I'm gonna undo this. Select all. And go to shading UVs. Normals, recalculate, flip direction. Could be just one of the normals or something is off. So I'm gonna try again. But I'm running into these problems as I record so you can see what's going on as well. So, let's try that again, shall we? Daily tools. Circle, and no, it's just not cooperating on this computer for some reason. Normally it's supposed to work and it would distribute all the edges evenly. So, I don't know what the hell's going on. I do not know why. Yeah, I'm sitting outside right now because the TV's on inside and it's just distracting as well. Let's see. Is there another way I can distribute this uh, smooth vertex? It might do it. Does it come close? I can't tell. Can try something else on loop tools, and that would be space. Space might do it, but it looks close. I know circle usually does it as well, so. Enough of that escapade, let's get to uh, making the wasted. Oh, yeah, one more thing I want to do is temporarily add an edge here, split in the middle of that, right in the middle. So I can rotate this into alignment. So I have that vertex selected. And what I want to do is I'm going to need another piece of geometry. So I'm going to shift add plane. Repeat it on the y axis 90. And I guess you can hear my neighbors now. Huh? So I'm recording outside. And now I can rotate this. And I'm just going to move that. <laughs> Everything get in alignment. This is fun. Especially when I am outside on a laptop trying to record a video. Oh, the screen capture. Cruiser first. Hmm. Well, I active, that's probably what it is. Yep, that's what it was. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being distracted by so many things trying to do this. It's annoying. Anyhow, you know, I have this in the alignment I wanted. Which can help. I'm get rid of that edge loop and I don't need it. So now this is 32th gear in alignment with the X and Y sort of. And where am I? I am out edit mode, object mode. Back to this layer. I don't need that circle. 
probably raise it by the next one too. I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to make a duplicate. I'm going to move that duplicate back to that first layer. So, have that. And in this case, the duplicate is what I'm going to use to make the worm gear. So, it's going to be a little trickier. I'm going to go edit mode. And all this inside mesh stuff, I don't need. So, all that can go. having trouble seeing it on my end because I am outside with glare on my screen. You don't see that. And... Just going to delete... Paste this only. Oh, it didn't do it. That took too much. And how did I get... See, it doesn't want to. <laughs> it doesn't want to grab the thing I want to do when I do a multiple. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, see, so you keep selecting more junk than I want it to. Just annoying. So what I am going to do is pause this and I am going to delete all that so I just have the outside loop and save you the time of watching me go through all that. And I am back again. Hopefully this thing is recording right. I don't see the icon change so I'm assuming it's working. Doesn't seem to be any other indicator. And I changed this gear shape just to the outline because I need to convert this into a path order to have it go around as the bevel object for another path. So we're already in object mode so I'm just going to do is, uh, is it convert where is it? Convert to R. So I'm going to convert this to a curve. Now, as so we see here, this curve object, so let's create a uh, circle. And that is going to be way small, so I'm going to scale it up. So, and on this circle, we are going to have is our bevel object. This mesh, so this gear. It says cube, but it's the gear. And as you can see, it looks kind of weird right now. But if you go over this, it is a Tori shaped gear thingy. And. <laughs> Now it is pretty big, so Get that one and scale it down. So and I don't know why it's scaling the radius. Maybe because I'm scaling it in object mode. I let me scale this in edit mode. There we go. That's what I had to do. Alright. So I'm scaling that in edit mode. And you can see it has this funky shape to it. It's like a, uh, it's a circle, but it's a gear over the circle. And it's sort of what we want, not quite. So what we need to do is changes and one of the ways we got to do that is where's the UV here the all 
Alright, your cyclic you turn that off. And in a way this is kind of broken because when you turn off cyclic instead of keeping these at the angle they were, it rotates them funky and I believe they are even. So those are 45 on the Z. Well, you know what? I gotta do it like this. I gotta switch to a median point. And I gotta change this to free align and same with that one. I gotta toggle those. Okay. Let's see. Bring that one around like so. So now it curves as it was. And RZ45 here, the other way, and that curves as it was. And now I go back to change it to the 3D cruiser as the center point. I screwed that. And RZ5. Should be our. You know what? It's not 45, it is 90. There, that's what I wanted. Okay. It's RZ90. And as you notice, it looks like one point, but it is not one point. It is actually a separate mesh. So if I grab this and move it, see how that does that weird twisty thingy? That is what we want to take advantage of. Now I have the other end. And using Control T to twist, I am going to rotate it. Let's see. I want to say 15 degrees. No. Let's see. What well, would be a good multiple of 30 10 degrees? Yeah, I don't know. 20 degrees. 120. Degrees. 60 degrees works. Okay. And I believe that will stagger a whole two step. So now with that staggered like that, you can see this actually has a gear ratio to it now. And I'm going to select these other three, like so, and hit W and smooth curve tilt. And now this thing will actually have a twist to it. Well, it is not super obvious. And the inside portion is going to be our gear tooth area for our worm drive. So if you think of the hole inside this, it's going to be the worm drive gear, so... <laughs> yeah, it's funky, I know. Mode, object mode... And I'm going to scale that down a bit. Let's like that. Scale that back down. And the neighbor's stupid dog's barking, but I can't do much about that, can I? Alright. It's as small as it goes. Alright. Get this thing to go any smaller, uh I'm trying to think how can I get this smaller? It'll be Maybe this, I can go in edit mode. <laughs> no, I'm just not having a good time right now, but you're bearing with me. 
get this and you cut out the middle portion and that'll be your worm gear. So. Doing it this way. For some reason it won't go any smaller if I do it the other way. So I just want to get it back on the grid here. So I'm doing that. Have that in object mode. And I'm going to turn on the wireframe visibility. And the thing is, is there's three se or four sections of this that curve around. And the thing that divides your four sections is your UV resolution or your U resolution here. So right now there are 12, so that is going to be 48 around. And I am going to bump that up to 15. So it will be 60 even all the way around. And so there'll be like 15 between each quarter turn here. So what that does is it's how many steps you have between each node and the curve. So that is that. I can hide that. And since this is like that, I am going to uh, go back to my other, go back to this layer. Alright, so now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it, alright, and I'm going to move that duplicate back to this layer, I'm going to this layer, and I'm going to take that object and convert back to a mesh. I'll go to edit mode. I did not want to do that yet. Because I still have to scale this. <laughs> Derp. Alright. I'm just not having that great time right now. So many distractions. Where's my ear? overlaying it. Okay. I am going to rotate this. Uh, Any degrees. I'm going to scale it. to figure out how narrow the waist is on here. <laughs> yeah. Convert that. Let's change that display to wire for now so I can see where the gear is. And photographic mode. This size to be the same. So from the center point cursor is I'm going to move this let me on it and get all right to where it is about the thickness I want it at the center <laughs> and I'm going to select this okay it's 
it's hard to see. Edit it. So the whole match is up. It's kind of hard to see you when I can't see the gear. <laughs> this view. Uh, can see it from this view. Not very well. Hmm. I'm going to temporarily solidify this so I can see what I am doing here. Alright. It's very close. All right. So, like that. Okay. That will be in the ballpark. <laughs> Select the right thing. Alright. Don't need that modifier in there anymore. I don't need to display this as wire anymore. Yeah, 60. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this thing should do. One whole turn and it'll rotate what 30 degrees? I think that's what, or was it 60 degrees? Okay. Yeah, it makes it easier to divide up in the sections to you when we cut this thing up. So, what we do now is we uh, chop this thing up. And it is still a uh, path, so I gotta convert this to mesh like I was going to. <laughs> it's all convoluted as heck, but hey. Pardon me, I'm having trouble seeing on my screen because all the crap going on here with the daylight. So. And keep. That section out of there. It's okay. I'll 
I'll take a section like this. Part of it. And it's going to be my cutting right here. So this plane, I'm going to chop out this thing. project cut through and select the inverse read all that crap all right so now we should have a mesh that represents the worm gear From near you cap it off and all that other stuff. <laughs> it takes a while and then you end up with a worm gear that will match the teeth on this and angle this gear. Or you make a gear that's angled. A helical cut gear. And it will engage this on all the teeth here. So That's how you get a, uh, what do you call it, a sectioned uh, worm gear or a throat or a wasted worm gear. Now I will finish the video because there's just too much noise and I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to cap this off and stuff. And that's how you do it with a uh, geometric uh, method. Sorry it takes so long, it's just... <laughs> I'm not having the best conditions where I'm doing this right now.